It's been a little while since I've made a video for the YouTube channel and I thought I would just check in and hopefully share with you guys um, a technique that maybe you're not familiar with that I believe is actually very practical, especially if you are somebody who does a lot of resampling, taking full length records and trying to pull out breaks or bits to then uh, work with further in your actual music. So just a quick update on what I'm doing. I've been working very hard on a synthesis methods course for sormena.org, which I hope to uh, start releasing maybe around uh, the first of next year. So if you really like what I do here um, with the YouTube videos, definitely head over there and uh, everything is totally free. You can sign up for the forum, uh, follow along with the courses. You don't even need to sign up to do that. And it's really the best way to support the stuff that I do and hopefully will one day help me accomplish and achieve some of the dreams that I've set out to do. But enough about me, let's focus here on this technique. So this is the recording we're going to be working with. I can't play too much of it because I don't want YouTube to like flag the video, but this is the recording. You can obviously look it up. <laughs> And what I want to do is grab one of these drum break parts. Uh, this, this technique would actually work for pretty much anything in the record as long as you're able to count it out and you're feeling the groove. Because right now this is here in raw mode and so it doesn't really matter if I was to go up here and change the BPM. It's going to sound the same. The waveform display just compensates because it's saying like, okay, well at 110 it takes longer, you know, the one, two, three, four is longer in time in seconds than it is if I'm up at like 127, uh, which is where it was. Doesn't really matter where we start from. The important part is we find what we want to take. All right, so let's go and it really doesn't matter. We could take something from here, I guess. And just by looking at this, I already have an idea of where the one is. It might be like this right here. Let's just listen. Okay, so this would definitely work as a one, right? Uh, I'm a little worried because some of these have like these double hits, but this is definitely a one right here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I'm just gonna pull out what I want, and I'm gonna do that using the slice tool. All right, so I'm gonna come right up against it here, get my slice there. I can uh, actually then go and get rid of everything before it. Let's go back. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, one. Okay, so this would be the next one over here. If I want to get the two bars, I can come over and again, get rid of everything else. And now what I should be able to do is you're going to see that if I bring this over, this isn't lining up with two bars, right? It's, it's going past it by quite a little bit. But if I was to take this and I was to loop it, it should sound like a perfect loop just using my eyes. And if I need to go in here and make some slight adjustments, I can very easily do that by just dragging one way or the other. But I think this should be about perfect. And let's just take a listen. So actually, let's only go with the one bar. That's actually going to cause some problems. So let's go back. One, two, three, four, one. All right. I thought maybe that little turnaround would work, but it's obviously not. So I'm just going to go in here and cut it right here, right before we start to see some motion happening there in the waveform display. So if I loop this now, right, we have our perfect little drum break. Whoop. But the issue is this isn't stretched. This isn't even synced to time or anything like that. So if I was to put on the metronome, We're nowhere near being in time. And so what, all we have to do now, though, is we have to stretch this back to fit one bar because from our counting, we can hear this is one bar, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But that's not what the readout is saying. This is saying it's one bar and a little bit more. So clearly this is off. Like this needs to be slower. And so the way I'm going to do that is actually kind of experimental, something you're probably uh, aren't used to seeing somebody do. But I'm going to start by consolidating this. And the reason I'm consolidating it is when you look at Bitwig Studio, you have here a container and then an event. And if I want to like 
not have the event go along with the container, I need to consolidate so that I can pull this out and the event doesn't follow it. So in theory, I could then go in and drop other audio clips in, but this is just useful for me to make sure that if I was to, uh, for some reason, be pulling this one way or the other, it's not gonna like go along with it. All right, so what I need to do now is I need to fit this into one bar, or I wanna visually see it fitting into one bar. I'm not even gonna stretch anything yet. And the way I'm gonna do this is by zooming in, and now I'm gonna take our global tempo up here, because we're still in raw mode. And I'm gonna start pulling it down. So I'm going to now manually be finding what the BPM of this specific drum break is to get this to be a perfect one bar loop. So as I start pulling it back, we come closer, we come closer. All right, we're very close here. So we're at 105 and now I can start fine tuning this up until I get really, really close. And you can see that we're down here in one over 512. So this is incredibly zoomed in. This is like fine control here. And as I go up and I go up, I want to get as close as I possibly can. All right, so let's see. Which is closer? Probably this is closer. Um, 105.39. And again, if I come in here and I loop this section, we should still hear our perfect loop. We're still in raw mode. Right, no problem. So now what I need to do is I need to go into the stretch mode. And it's very important that I remember this number here, 105.39, because if I match those up, it will be as if we're still in raw mode. All right, so you're going to see this real quick. I go into my stretch mode. I change this to now 105.39. Sometimes you have to do this twice. It never works on the first go. And now we should be right where we were before. Only now we're stretched. And if I turn the metronome on, we can hear that we're in time. The last step, and this is what makes it perfect, is to go in here, zoom in super close, hover at the end, you get that end stretch mark, which you don't see right now, bring it in, snap it. And the movement, what the, what the audio file is actually doing is so minuscule, you're not even gonna be able to hear or tell a difference but we're now perfectly stretched. And so if I go in here and change this to 120, So what this is doing is it's putting the least amount of strain on the stretching algorithm. Obviously, as you go to extremes one way or the other from what that base tempo is, it's going to uh, you know, have to work and act a little bit harder. But this is, in my opinion, probably the most accurate way of grabbing like a break beat or something like that, that has some groove, but still locking it into tempo. So just thought I'd share that technique with you. This is what I've been doing now for the past few months. And I find it works so much better than sort of your traditional uh, stretching method. This is how you can really kind of pinpoint it in. And I think it takes about the same amount of time as, as maybe more of a, um, you know, starting from the front and ending at the end, we're kind of going the opposite way. Uh, I don't even know what I'm saying at this point, but I just hope that this technique has been useful for you and is something you can uh, implement into your own workflow. Thanks a lot.